Hey, 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 good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday morning. I hope you are doing well and uh, up and at them and ready to roll this morning. We're going to be jumping into the book of Joel, finishing up chapter two this morning. So grab your nugget notebooks and your Bibles and join me. We're going to be in uh, Joel chapter two and we're looking at the end of it. So Joel chapter two, verses 28 through 32. Joel chapter two, 28 through 32. And this one also ties in to Peter preaching at Pentecost. And so we'll look at also uh, Acts 2, 17 through 21. And they're going to be real similar, but it's kind of cool to see how they come together. And so um, let's pray and jump into the text this morning. This is kind of, uh, as always, there's cool stuff that just comes up as you dig into God's Word. And so um, just really powerful connection between what Joel is saying is uh, going to be available and then how Peter circles back and actually quotes the words of Joel to uh, show how God came through on this very promise. So let's pray and then let's dive in together. All right. And Lord, we love you. We just thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for um, just amazing, awesome, faithful guys like Joel and Peter, and that we get to learn from their uh, experience, from their teaching, um, continue to just shape us and change us. Lord, help us to get our minds around um, thinking about who are they writing to and what would they m have meant to say to the people that they were writing it to, and then what can we learn um, as a distant observer and learner from that uh, stuff that happened in history. And so Lord, help us to just keep learning and growing. Let's pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we have got Joel chapter two. Let's jump in here. We're gonna finish Joel chapter two, and then we're gonna zip over to Acts. So it goes like this. Joel chapter two, picking it up in verse 28 says, then, after doing all these things, I will pour out my spirit upon all my people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike, and I will cause wonders in the heavens and on earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before the great and terrible day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, for some on Mount Zion in Jerusalem will escape, just as the Lord has said. These will be among the survivors whom the Lord has called. And so we've got Joel talking about this idea that um, there's going to be a day where God really levels the playing field, and he uh, makes his spirit available to everybody. Uh, whether you're a servant, whether you're a man or a woman or a child, God is available to everybody. And that is not a common occurrence in the culture that Joel was in. This was a very um, class-based system, and so it had a ton to do with the family line that you were born into, what your trade was, what your status uh, in the community was, uh, had so many other factors involved in it. And it was just widely known that God uh, really, it seemed like, only poured out his spirit or gave a special anointing to maybe a prophet like Joel, maybe a king, um, maybe a special judge in a circumstance. But for sure, the regular average everyday person uh, did not have God's spirit or God's uh, special anointing. And so here Joel is saying like, you got to understand, like, repenting, turning from your sin, persevering and sticking with it, it's so worth it. There, there's going to be a day where God changes everything, and God makes His Spirit available to everyone, no matter what your class, no matter what your family background, no matter what your gender, your race, uh, your wealth, your status, like, none of that is going to matter. What's going to matter is if you have... Um, pierced your heart, turned your heart, and you know, ripped your heart, not your clothes, as you grieve your sin, like we learned about earlier in Joel. So let's fast forward to Pentecost in the New Testament in the book of Acts. And the book of Acts, chapter 2, 
Um, I want to pick it up in uh, actually verse 14, and then we're going to roll through and see how Peter quotes Joel, um, just verifying that this is what's going on at Pentecost. God's Spirit has come down on the people that have been there in Jerusalem for Passover for from all around the places, and there's all these different people that can hear each other speaking in each other's languages supernaturally, and there's just amazing things going on. God's Spirit is specially there on everybody, no matter what their status, what their background, where they came from, race, religion, creed, or not religion, race, or, uh, you know, wealth, whatever that's, you know, wherever their background is. And so here's what Peter is doing to try and explain what's going on, because people are confused, like, what in the world? How is this possible? All right. So it goes like this. Peter says, uh, verse 14, chapter 2, verse 14 in Acts. <clears throat> then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. It's nine o'clock in the morning, which is much too early for that. Uh, no, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. It says, Verse 17, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike. And they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red. And before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives, but everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so it's just a really cool connection to see how um, Scripture ties together and God's overarching story continues to just reveal itself. And so all the way back in Joel, God's uh, speaking through Joel to reveal this bigger agenda that he's got, that he's a God for everybody. And there will be a day when even his spirit will be on uh, and available, pour out available to everyone, even servants, you know, even people that are the lowest class in society will have the privilege of God's special anointing, God's spirit upon them in a way that they've only ever imagined was available for a very, very, very select one or two in their slice of history, right? And so, uh, and then at Pentecost, we see it come to pass that, uh, that God's spirit is available and comes down on servants, men and women alike. And, and it's so confusing for people. Th these people that have received God's spirit are so excited they are prophesying and prophesying it doesn't mean that they're just rambling and bambling and just like speaking gibberish they're prophesying is like speaking words that are going to edify and encourage um, they're sharing maybe a picture that god gave them they're edifying and lifting one another up with their words and their encouragement and it's the kind of stuff that it's like, man, that didn't come from you because I know you. I worked with you all day yesterday. Like that, something just came out of you that was like, that you're spitting fire, right? Like that was straight from God. Those those words of encouragement or that wisdom, that depth that was beyond you. That's the kind of prophecy they're talking about. They're not spitting out like, hey, this is what's going to happen, and you know, 32 days from now. If, future predictions, telling fortunes. That's not at all what they're talking about. And so they're prophesying, they're building each other up, they're encouraging each other, but there's this miraculous thing going on where all these different people here are in Jerusalem for the Passover celebration from all around the, the known world at the time, and they all speak these different uh, languages and they speak different dialects um, and have accents and stuff just like we do from a different places around our country. And all of a sudden, no matter who they were or where they were from, supernaturally, because of God's special um, intervention in that situation, in that time and place, they could actually hear each other and understand each other as if someone was speaking to them in their own native language. And you could imagine the amount of like excitement and and 
shock and and just awesomeness going on. It would have been a little bit of confusion, followed by amazing excitement, followed by, holy smokes, do you realize what's going on here? And this crowd would have probably looked like a bunch of crazy people, which is why Peter has to get up and say to everybody, listen, I've heard the rumors. I've heard all the scuttle going around on the edges of the crowd. I've heard what some of the religious leaders are trying to dismiss. They're trying to say this isn't anything special. I don't know what happened to all these people that, you know, all these uh, um, Christians that are showing up or all of these God-fearing people that are here. I, I, it wasn't Christians at the time. That's about to happen. But about all these people that have showed up, they're, they're saying, they what happened that everybody got drunk so early in the morning? Like everybody's off their rocker. Like it looks like they're just wasted, right? Like was there a, a kegger that we didn't hear about? Like what happened that all these people are rumble you know stumbling around and acting crazy and peter has to get up and go oh i've heard the stories you guys all think they're drunk trust me they're not drunk you want to know what's going on what's going on is you're seeing before your very eyes the prediction the the prophet uh joel said the the words that joel said so long ago are coming true before your very eyes. Like God is leveling the playing field. He's pouring out his spirit on everybody once and for all and of making himself available personally, fully to each and every person. He's coming out of the temple. The veil was torn and he's leaving the temple in the Holy of Holies. And he's now saying that anyone who calls on his name becomes the Holy of Holies and God's presence resides in them. And they become now instead of a a temple where everybody goes to each person who calls on the name of the Lord and repents from their sin and asks God for forgiveness, that person becomes a temple. They actually become, uh, I love the way I heard this described uh, once, they become a mobile mini temple. So now the temple goes where they go. And you, uh, like them, when you receive God's spirit, you get to be a mobile mini temple and you take the presence of God with you everywhere you go. And anybody that interacts with you gets to approach the Holy of Holies, which in for thousands of years was reserved only for special people at special times in unique circumstances. And here now God is like 100% approachable, available. Um, and it's pretty powerful stuff. Pretty, pretty amazing stuff. So that's the stuff that's sticking out to me this morning. Let me jump in here in uh, Facebook land and see who's watching with us this morning, who's up and at them. Um, if you have not commented and let us know where you're watching from, even if you're watching on a replay, and maybe it's not even the day that this episode aired, maybe you're watching, this is Thursday, maybe you're watching this on a Saturday and you just happen to catch it somehow, uh, share where you're watching from, how'd you find us, uh, do you know somebody that watches that referred it to you, you know, like, hey, who told me about this? Um, we'd love to, to hear that kind of stuff. So let us know where you're watching from. And, uh, and then also be sure to, uh, share this in your newsfeed, share it. Um, you can also, you know, do a screenshot, share it on Instagram and post, a, uh, the description in your comments and say, Hey, go over to FaceTime and watch this. It's a cool thing that happens every day to help us be in God's word. So. All right, we got all kinds of peeps on here as always. Morning, Alice. Morning, Eileen down in Oregon. Hope you're doing well. Morning, Mary down in California. And Linda, good morning up in Post Falls area. And Michelle, which is probably Ryland. So now that I know that, Ryland, what's up? Ryland is our resident um, elementary girl. Uh, her mom is working mornings from home now, and so she's busy. Michelle's busy working, but Ryland is up and at them and tuning in for Jesus time and making a practice of being in God's word. So props to you, young lady. Proud of you. Uh, Angie, good morning to you. Driving to school and Judy and Matt and Ingrid and Daisy and Zach and Ann and uh, Kelly, uh, good morning to you. And Rob, good morning. And Mike and Brenda and all kinds of other peeps. Uh, Miss Karen as well. So it's good to see great crowd on here this morning. Again, make sure you're sharing, inviting people, and we'll just continue to help create a community where it makes it easy for people to dig into God's word in a real practical, regular way on a, on a daily basis. And, uh, and then you, they get to be a part of getting to know you. And uh, you guys get to pray for each other, encourage each other, share thoughts about uh, God's word, and spur each other on to just keep wrestling and learning and having 
um, God's text help shape and change the way you think and act. So that's that's the good stuff. So let's uh, get off and on our way. Take your little mobile mini temple uh, out and about today and see if you can't uh, have God go with you and bump into some people that might not have any idea that they just got to uh, approach the Holy of Holies with uh, no preparation and no special request. They, they have no idea what a big deal that is. And so let me pray for us. Pray for our opportunities today, and we'll get off and running on this Thursday. Man, Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much, God, for um, Joel and Peter. And, and thank you so much, God, that you um, changed the game, that you made yourself available to anybody um, that uh, wants salvation, that's willing to turn from their sin, um, you're available to them in a not just a, a distant, far off way that once in a while or semi annually or annually they can come and be near your presence, but you're available um, immediately and consistently all the time. And, uh, and so, God, I just pray that as we wrestle with this idea that we're now mobile mini temples and that we've got you walking with us uh, consistently. Uh, that you would just give us opportunities, give us opportunities to bump into people that um, need to be near you and they need to be close to your presence and they, they need to have opportunities to hear you talking to them and see you caring about them and, and that um, they may not even realize it's, it's you uh, as you work through us um, until later when they get to know you. But Lord, give us opportunities to um, represent you well, uh, to love people well, and uh, even if it's a little uncomfortable or weird, who cares? Like, just let's uh, just give us opportunities to um, take you with us everywhere we go, and um, help people get to know you. And so, Lord, we love you. We just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody, you guys have a fabulous Thursday. As always, we got church in Colfax tonight. We got church this weekend in person uh, here in Pullman. We got church online. For those of you that are joining us remotely, if you don't have a home church, check out rlcpullman.com, R-L-C-P-U-L-L-M-A-N.com, and uh, join us for church online, and we'll see if we can't help you get plugged in with us and find some community that way for the time being. Uh, and then uh, we will uh, be off and running. I'll post something on here tomorrow morning to get you guys wrestling with the text over the weekend, give you some fun homework and stuff to dig into. So in the meantime, have an awesome day.